Let's talk to James Dellingpole now, uh, who tweeted out, uh, I think yesterday, uh, that actually Boris Johnson should go further uh, and go full Trump. James, very good morning to you. Morning, good morning, James. Thank you very much for joining us. What did you mean by going well, full you know Trump? What? I was really quite surprised by how popular that tweet was. I mean, I got the usual suspects saying that this meant that I was endorsing racism, of course. fascism, et cetera, et cetera. Because yeah, yeah. he... Because Trump does get a pretty, pretty bad press over here. I think, I think a lot of people in Britain are quite ill-informed about what Trump is doing for America. And I think he's, I think he's actually quite popular in America. He's doing, he's doing a good job. Anyway, I think what I, what I was suggesting was that Boris needs to get off the fence, stop playing the political games that so many politicians do, and actually do what, what, lead, what political leaders are supposed to do, which is represent the people rather than the kind of the Westminster bubble. Yeah, indeed. And if he can do that, because, yeah, I mean, look, there, there, are lots of, uh, there are lots of good contenders out there who could do this. You know, Gove could do this. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, if he were interested, could do it. But I don't think he is interested in being, in being um, PM. But it, it's up for grabs. Anyone who, who, who chooses to ride the populist wave and actually represent what ordinary people want, I think the... Uh, you know, the leadership of, the, of this country is there for the taking, and it could be really good for us. It could, but isn't there also an issue there? Because when you ask the people what they want, inevitably they don't actually know what they want. They think they know what they want, uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, but they really I, don't have any idea. I, I don't know. I, I do kind of trust the, the, the wisdom of crowds. I, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of snootiness about, about, about the mob, the electorate, the, the masses, the people. And I think that their finest hour, our finest hour, was was on the the Brexit vote. I think a lot of people there saw an opportunity to place a vote which they thought was going to be finally respected. You know, but most people go into general elections thinking, well, it doesn't really matter who I vote for. I'm going to get the same old rubbish anyway. Yeah. But this was different. And I think actually there are sort of basic common sense things that that Boris could get behind. Like, for example, I mean, continuing the Brexit theme. Given that we did vote for Brexit, let's 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 have Brexit, shall we? Let, let let's not muck around anymore. Let's not get bullied by. No, I agree with that, and I think I think and it has been said before, and I think I've even said it. Boris Johnson has said it. You know, if if Trump was involved in the Brexit negotiations, he'd just be walking out of the room and saying, "Cheerio, you know, yeah. you want some money from us? You send us a bill, and we'll put it in a bin, and then you can send us a final demand in a couple of months later." And that I think would be very very welcome. But what I suppose I mean by the the the, the great British public not exactly knowing what they want. They want Brexit, but they're not quite sure how to make it happen and they're not quite sure which version of it. I don't think there's any two people in the country who agree on it. Can I quibble with you slightly there? Sure. I think they actually do. I, I think it's only the politicians who are saying, oh, oh you don't want to do that. that. It's, it's much more complicated than you think. Mm. Actually, I think most British people w would go, actually, you know what? It's really easy. If, if they want a no deal, if they, if they want WTO rules where we don't even have to pay um, 39 billion to the EU, well, that's their problem. You know, we're up for, up for free trade. We're up for no tariffs. If they want to play hardball, that's their problem. But as far as we're concerned, we want to be a free trading state. You know, we want to create jobs, jobs, good jobs. Um, we want to have a, a, a bright economic future. I think people would go with that. I don't think they'd have any, you know, they'd be, be agonising over the terms of, of, of the EU. Now, now, James, you—I mean, you—you you write for Breitbart, and you use the kind of association that has uh, been owned by Steve Bannon uh, in the past. Uh, been, he's been involved there. Hmm. He, his in, intervention in Europe, quite clearly, is to come and, and, and you know, try and use some of those terms that he used in, in the US in terms of uh, getting Trump elected and telling some European leaders you can do this here too. But that kind of behaviour is, is quite divisive. And my concern is, yes, you might be able to win the membership of the Conservative Party with this kind of language, but the nation won't stand for it. And you will not get the Conservative Party elected on that kind of politics in the future. I mean, I presume you could entirely disagree with me on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, with respect, it just sounds like woo. I mean, um, d divisive, it's not even a word. It, it, it's just a kind of... It is of, a word. It's, it's divisive yeah, is a yeah, word, I'd, right, have to, to I'd have to go with Kate on I this, thought James. you were quite bright. Divisive is definitely a word, yeah. It, 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 divisive just, just, just means... 
it means nothing. It's, it, it's just a kind of a slogan brought out by, used by desperate people to slag off, pe- slag off politicians they disagree with. I mean, I mean, isn't politics by nature no. a divisive James, pro- I thoroughly pro- really disagree with you. One party or the other. This, this You're never going to get everyone satisfied. And, and I think one of the things I, I was very interested to see was um, how the, the Tory party chairman, what's his name, Brandon Lewis, mm-hmm. made the mistake, I think, of trying to get Boris Johnson to apologise for saying what most people in Britain actually think about the burqa. They don't want to be... They, they don't want to be nasty to Muslims, but at the same time they think, yeah, burqas, it's not really an English thing. It's not really what you want to see on the English streets. So he was capturing probably the popular, the popular mood. And Brandon Lewis was playing the, that, that virtue-signalling politics game and no, but everyone's playing a game, James, because Boris Johnson is playing a game as well. He's playing the game of uh, appealing to those people who, who, like you, don't think the burqa belongs on the street. I don't really care if somebody wants to wear a burqa and walk down the street. Why would you care? Mm. Why would you? No, no, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think, look, the idea that, 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 that um, politicians, that there is a politician on earth who doesn't play games is, is, is just silly. I think we, we, all, we all accept that Boris... Yeah, but there's a lot is, of stake here, James. It's Boris not just a game. Is, is, is on is on manoeuvres, just like every other politician. I just happen to think that Boris's manoeuvres are better than Theresa May's manoeuvres or um, Brandon Lewis's manoeuvres or, you know, the, the, the current Conservative establishment. I think that he's a breath of fresh air. And it, I, I think if he has the courage of his convictions, rather than... You know, I mean, the big mistake would have been if he'd, ba- he'd back down, if he'd listened to Brandon Lewis's tweet and he'd back down. But he didn't. And he doesn't look like he doesn't look like he's going to do that. Um, just for your before we carry on, divisive definition in the Cambridge English Dictionary tending to cause disagreement or hostility between people. Yeah. Um, so we'll just we'll, we'll move on from that because well, at the end of the day, Boris Johnson, if he wants to go full Trump, isn't Donald Trump, right? The problem for him is that he's not. Uh, outside the Westminster bubble. He's not an outsider of, from the political scene. And in fact, I don't think many people will fall for him being, you know, this kind of maverick figure because he's, he's always been a politician. It's all he's ever been. He's never, I mean, you know, you could say he was a journalist for a while, but I mean, basically, he was, he's always been a politician. Yeah, I think, look, I think, I think in every politician there is an actor. And I think that at different stages of, the, uh, of their career, um, I mean, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're not as, as, as principled as I am. I mean, here I am. This is why I'm not a politician because I'm just so, so ideologically pure that I could never, I could never bring myself to to, to um, indulge the compromises. That well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you say that you know all politicians and all politics is divisive. Actually, an awful lot of it recently has been about compromise. Now, that may be uh, not necessarily the way to go, but it tends to be the way that most people in most Western democracies want it no, to go. No, it's my, it's the way it has gone. It's the way it has gone for, for 20 or 30 no, years. No, but this is not an extremist are, country, James. You know that as well as I do. That's why the left are, have never managed to get a socialist government into power, and it's why the right have never managed to get a very right-wing government into power. I think, I think that, that it's precisely a response to this kind of stasis, this, this kind of centrist sludge that we are told is all we can ever expect. We can never expect anything, anything more positive than that. You know, we can never have really a really small government. We can never have really low taxes. We can never have really free trade because, cause, cause, you know, elections are won in the centre ground, yada, yada, yada. I, I think well, people they are, think though. That. I think people... Yeah, no, no. That is the, that is the received wisdom which you hear from lots of, lots of commentators. I disagree with that. Well, that's what's always happened, though, James. That's yeah, my yeah, point. But, but, it, but it, doesn't, it ain't necessarily the case that it's going to go on that way. Well, it may not. Well, let me ask you this. If, if in fact, Donald uh, Trump is the, is the model for Boris Johnson and his behaviour, mm. what should his next move be, then? What should he do next? And I don't mean just not apologise, but presumably he needs no, but to that do is something kind of, else. Uh, it's kind of key, mate. <laughs> do, do, do you think he will apologise? No, I don't think he should apologise, and I don't no, think no, he, he will. I think, and I think that's where Theresa May's made a massive error. So in order yeah. for, for Boris to capitalise on that, yeah. what does he do next? Oh, I think he needs to start um, ramping up the, uh, the rhetoric about the kind of future that he sees for Britain outside the, outside the EU. I mean, I don't think... I think it would be a mistake if he talks about Islam again. I mean, he, he, he did his thing there, and, that was, and that's fine. But there are lots of, there are lots of other issues that he could... He could talk about, you know, um, uh, although I'm, I'm, I'm lost to think what they might be. Well, I mean, 
Europe is the obvious one, our relationship with Europe. I think well, if he, I mean, if he put forward, I suppose, and I'm answering my own question now, if he yeah. put forward a very, very much more solid, cogent and sort of believable version of Brexit that people could hang their hats on, if you like, then mm. he would already be, um, you, know, you know, a mile and a half ahead of Theresa May because that's not, not what she's been able to do. Mm. And he's in a very lucky position that he doesn't have to negotiate that. We can all say that from the sidelines, Mike. We can all sit on the sidelines and go, mm-hmm. oh, you know what, my utopia vision of what it could look like, how wonderful it could well, no, be. But he also when has you're at to the top say, table, when you try and work yeah, out, yeah. it's much harder well, well, when you do, try well, and maybe, do it. Yeah, but then that's when you have to say, this is, what I, then this is how I would make it happen as well. You can't just say, this is my vision. You'd have to say, this is my vision and this is how I'm going to make it happen. And if that means walking away from Europe and just saying, you know, come and see us when you feel like it yeah. for some money. When That's I was the at, answer. I'm afraid when I was at number 10, there were no real you know, offerings from the likes of Boris Johnson and others. And just, despite the fact I really respect him and I you know, loved working for him over the years, there was no real plan of, of uh, how we would achieve the kind of Brexit that he's looking for. And I think that Theresa May has asked him to deliver that to him, to her, all that way through as Foreign Secretary. And it hasn't materialised, well, one, ra- one way or another. What, you're saying that Boris should have come up with a, a, with a Brexit plan while he was Foreign Secretary? Well, I, uh, yes, yeah, James, I, mean, I am, how, because the reason why I'm saying you that, are, James... Are, are you with the workings of the, of the civil service, with Ollie Robbins, with the special arrangement that Theresa May made, whereby she completely sidelined her department for exiting Brexit because she was giving all the world work to, work to the Remainer civil service. The Don't reason why I'm laugh, saying that, James, you, the reason why I'm saying that is because is I think being... that Theresa May wanted that plan. She, she realised that, the, you know, she opened the box, nothing was there, and that she's had, she's had to work on a plan that she, she doesn't want and no one really wants I around, the, around the cabinet table. I congratulate you the most fascinating and original gloss on, on Theresa I think you're May. deluded, James. I think you're absolutely deluded. And if you want to come on at another time and talk to us, talk to us about exactly how she should negotiate a Brexit, I'd love to hear it because I never really heard it from any anybody that, that can give a coherent argument as to how we do this. Because if Theresa May could get a better Brexit deal, believe me, she would. And um, we'll have to go, I'm afraid, James, but we'll come back to you another time uh, when you can give us your cogent arguments. James Dunningpole there uh, from Breitbart giving us his view of how uh, Boris should go full Trump. I'm not, I think my view of how he should go full Trump was better than his, to be honest, but I don't think he's given it much thought. 